It is so good to be back with you uh, and to bring you uh, God's Word on this day. I said to, to someone, I said, they said, well, you're going to talk about money? And I said, no, I'm not. And I love being able sometimes to just preach. And our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Mark. Now, the Gospel of Mark is the shortest gospel, and if you, if you look at it, it just continually moves. I mean, just absolutely from one story to another. Now, the scripture verses that we're going to look at today are from Mark chapter 2, and it's, it's frankly my favorite story in, in scripture. It's my favorite story when, uh, when I was at United uh, and took uh, preaching, one of the things we did is we, because of the, quote, oral tradition, we, we memorized and told the story. Well, Mark chapter 2 was mine. Now, I'll just, just a word of confession here. That was in 1982, and I am now 65 years old. So if, if you choose to pick up your Bible and look at Mark chapter 2, I may not hit every word, okay? But I want to tell you the story. And I invite you to, to sit back. You might even want to close your eyes as you hear this, this wonderful story. And my prayer for you is that you might find your place in this story. Mark chapter 2. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, after several days, it was reported that he was at home. And so many people came. So many people came that they filled the house that he was staying. There was no room. <clears throat> there was no room even in the doorways, the windows. It was full. And he was speaking and teaching the word. And eventually, there came four people, four friends, carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. Now, getting to the home where Jesus was staying, they saw all the people. And I imagine maybe they were discouraged. That's my parentheses. And when they saw they couldn't get him in, what did they do? You, you probably know what they did. Much to the homeowner's chagrin, they went up on top of the roof. They dug a hole through the roof. And it had to be a large hole because they lowered the man on the mat through the roof. And they laid him at the feet of Jesus. Now Jesus said to the four friends, because of your faith, Then to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. To the friends, because of your faith, your sins are forgiven. As often happens, there were those so-called religious people in the room 
And they began to murmur amongst themselves. I love that word, murmuring. That never happens at Wayne Church, I'm sure. But it happened here. They murmured. And they said, how can this man forgive sins? God alone forgives sins. Now Jesus, he heard the murmuring. And he said to them, tell me, what's easier? To forgive sin? Or to say, rise, take up your mat, and walk. But so that you might know that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins, I say, rise, take up your mat, and walk. And he did. people were amazed and they glorified God saying we have never seen anything like this before will you join me in a word of prayer and now oh God may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be yours. Lord, help us find our place in this amazing, amazing story. Amen. What I love about this story is that there is a place for everyone. There is absolutely a place for everyone. I also love this story because it is a wonderful description of the church. It's a wonderful description of the church. People who are broken, people who are paralyzed, people who have incredible faith, and bring folks into the presence of Jesus where they find healing, where they are touched by the power, love, and grace of God. And yes, there are those other folks. There are those other folks. We have them all. We have them all. I love this story. Because each one of us can find our place. Now think about those, those four friends. I want us to think about those four friends first. They probably grew up in the village with the paralytic. Knew him. Now we don't, we don't know how. We don't know how the man was paralyzed. We just know that he was. His friends had been with him. But then his friends began to hear these reports. They began to hear reports that there was this, this Jesus. And strange things were happening. Strange things were happening. Lepers were being cleansed. Peter's mother had been had been healed. Why at, at the temple there was a man possessed by demons and he was set free. And those friends hearing those reports somehow came to believe that this Jesus had the answer for their friend who was broken. Somehow they came to believe that their friend 
could be healed by this Jesus. And so, they picked him up. They picked up his mat and they carried it. And when they got there, there was no way they were going to get him into the presence of Jesus. It looked impossible. Now, if I would have been the man on the mat, I know what I would have said. I would have said, take me home. It's okay. Thank you. You tried. But it wasn't to be. But those friends, those friends somehow believed that Jesus had the answer and they were not going to be turned away. And they did the extraordinary. They didn't say, oh, we've done our best. They didn't say, no, it's it's not going to happen. They didn't agree. Instead, they said, no, we know that the answer for you is in that house, and we are going to take you into his presence. What faith. What faith. I don't know about you. I've had those kinds of people in my life. I've I've been, and I think we all have if we're honest, I've been that man on the mat. I've not wanted to believe. As I've gone through life, as we all have, there are those things that have made me question and wonder. Have you ever questioned and wondered? Maybe if not, I'm 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 happy for you, but that's not my story. I have. I have. But I've also had people who have picked me up. Picked me up and have brought me into the presence of Jesus and laid me there at his feet. And there is healing. There is wholeness because of the faith of the four friends. I have one friend and uh, her name is Sarah. When I was the director of stewardship in the Western Pennsylvania Conference, and this would have been in the early 90s, she was my administrative assistant. And somehow, by the grace of God, we have, we've remained best friends. I might see her once every five years. We email continually. She has prayed for me every day. She has prayed for my children every day. And she said to me these words at one of those points when I was on the mat. She called me Buddy Bear. No idea why. I even asked her. I don't know. She called me Buddy Bear, and she said to me, she said, Buddy Bear, it's okay if you don't believe, because I believe for you, and that's enough. believe for you and that's enough those four friends 
That's what's so important about Jesus turning and saying to the friends, your faith wasn't the man on the mat. It was the friends that had brought him into the presence of Jesus and there was healing. The question that I ask of you and I ask of Wayne Church and I ask of myself do I believe do you believe that Jesus is the answer for a broken world do you believe does Wayne Church do I believe that Jesus Christ is the answer for our world that is broken and paralyzed and laying on the mat. Because, folks, that's what the church is all about. And when we believe that, we do crazy things. We have capital campaigns for over a million dollars. Not because of the steeple. Trustees, I'm sorry. It's not because of the steeple. It's not because of the windows. It's not because of the doors. It's because people need a place where they can be laid at the feet of Jesus. If we believe that's true. That capital campaign. I think, did, did y'all fill out, were there commitment cards for stewardship like maybe last week or two weeks ago, something like that? Guess what? That wasn't about a budget. Sorry, finance team. That wasn't about a budget. That wasn't about salaries. It wasn't about utility bills. It was about having a place and people where we can come and be laid at the feet of Jesus and experience healing. I believe, maybe you don't believe it, but I will tell you, I believe for you that you have the answer. You have the answer, my friends, to a world that is broken. My gosh, all you have to do is go online or read the paper, however you choose to get the news, and you know this world is broken. You, Wayne Church, you have the answer. And I hope and pray that what you do for your community for your families and for the world. I hope and pray that you will pick up your corner of the blanket. See, that's the beautiful thing. You don't have to do it all. It's your corner of the blanket. And bring people to the feet When that happens, the people of Wayne will say, Wow, this is amazing. This is incredible. We've never seen anything like this before your corner
corner of the blanket. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Oh God, I I want to thank you for the people who have picked up the corner of the blanket and carried me and carried everybody in this auditorium, everybody online, that there have been people in our lives that have brought us into the presence of your Son. God, fill us with the courage, with the vision, and with the faith that we, individually, we as a church, that we, O oh God, would pick up our corner of the blanket, that people would come and know the wonderful, healing, glorious power of your Son, Jesus Christ. 